I'm Carolina and you will see me in the upcoming DVD about using appropriate materials with infants in a classroom environment. The classroom shown in the video is set up based on the knowledge that very young infants in childcare have many needs and require different experiences. Ian, Ian, your name is Ian. Round and round. Current research in the field of infant development shows that even the youngest children benefit from positive relationships with caregivers. During the video, you will see many times when the babies are held, talked to, and cared for. Engaging in positive interactions during routine care helps foster those close relationships. In the field of early childhood, good teaching practices allow for a sensory-rich environment that stimulates play and learning. This exposes babies to new experiences and lays a foundation for exploration. This video will illustrate many ways teachers can provide infants, especially non-mobile infants, a variety of play and learning experiences with appropriate materials and furnishings throughout the course of the caregiving day. I'm Carrie, and I want to share some important information about the DVD. The program has elected to provide for the needs of infants by limiting the group to seven children and by providing a floater teacher during hectic times of the day. The enrollment includes a range of ages from younger to older infants. While these choices are not required, many programs find that they are important factors in the care of very young children. Also, although the scenes in this video show a group of infants in a childcare center, family childcare providers can consider these same issues when setting up a learning environment in their home. Vino la lluvia y la hizo mojar. Vino la tormenta y la hizo caer. El sol salió, el agua se secó. Babies are naturally curious about the things around them. The role of the teacher is to create an environment that supports their free exploration, setting the stage for lifelong curiosity and learning. This exploration and play facilitates cognitive awareness, develops fine and large motor skills, and enhances social skills as well as language development. Observe how this classroom builds on children's interests by using books. As Zephaniah and I read a book together, notice the close physical contact, positive language, and a warm tone. Even though he cannot hold the book, notice his steady gaze and focus. Nadia, who is six months old, can hold and manipulate a book herself. She is learning that books contain pictures and words. There are different pictures on each page, and the pages can turn to expose new pictures. These types of experiences over time show infants that the objects pictured in the book are related. When a provider reads a book to the baby, the baby also begins to associate the pictures with words. Toddlers build on these skills when they play with books. They learn that books tell stories. They expand their vocabulary and are exposed to many different objects, animals, people, and actions. By offering babies a variety of appropriate books to explore, these early experiences become the precursor to later literacy. <laughs> Are you having fun with your book? Are you having fun with your book? The duck. We have set up the classroom so materials are easily reached by the children and ensure these items can be used by the babies in an imaginative and creative way. We guide and assist the children when needed to make sure the babies have a variety of learning experiences. It is easier to ensure mobile infants have toys and materials to play with because they will seek out and find interesting objects to use. Additional thought and planning is needed to make certain that non-mobile infants have a sufficient variety of toys and activities during the day. Luca is mobile. He is a beginning walker and is fairly steady. When Luca sees something he is interested in exploring, he will take off to retrieve it, even when his feet may not keep up with his intentions. What did you find, Luca? What is that? Is it cool? 
Mobile children like Christopher, who scoot, crawl, or walk to various areas of the classroom, will seek out and find interesting objects to explore. Younger infants typically require more routine care. More sleep, more bottles, and more diaper changes during the day. But when the infants are awake and ready to explore, the teachers can take advantage of this opportunity by providing them a variety of materials and experiences. Non-mobile children have yet to develop the physical skills that allow them to move about the classroom independently. They rely on adults in the classroom to bring them appropriate toys and to move them to different areas. This requires caregivers to be keenly aware of each child's developmental needs. Caitlin is sitting up independently but not yet crawling. By placing different types of toys on the floor in small bins or on low shelves, she can continue playing for as long as she is interested. A variety of toys within reach lets her select something new when she is ready. Ian is not yet rolling over consistently. As he uses I'll the toy right keys, back. he drops Thank them. He does not have the skills to find the toy he was playing with. It is important for Ian's caregivers to watch him and be aware of what he is doing. In this case, Carolina noticed he dropped his toy and offered him another one. Eden's teachers provide toys for her on the floor within her reach. She is not yet sitting up, so her choice of materials is limited to the toys very close to her. Notice how Carolina moves her to a new location when she is no longer happy. Yes, let's find something else to do. Yes. Let's consider a very young infant. Zephaniah is seven weeks old and new to the program. Even at such an early age, Zephaniah still needs learning materials. I offer him a soft bear. Zephaniah looks at it and then feels the soft bear while experiencing warm, supportive language and physical comfort. I also take toys and move them in front of Zephaniah's face to stimulate visual tracking. At this age, the caregiver's participation in the use of play materials is essential. For the younger infants, the teachers can enhance the physical development by placing objects close to them. This allows them to discover the object while waving hands or kicking legs. Hanging objects in front of a young infant can also help the child work toward the next developmental stage of batting at a toy. If the baby can grasp, the teacher simply makes sure there are toys available where the child can see and pick them up. You want to try this? Ooh, you're in the gym. Look at that. What do we have here? A rattle? and an elephant and a parrot. That's a lot of fun things. And over here you have a mirror. Do you see yourself? The busy, busy book. <gasps> Busy, busy book. Monkey sip. The interaction and caregiving offered by teachers is crucial in facilitating an infant's cognitive development as well as meeting their emotional, social, and physical needs. Toys and materials alone do not create a high quality environment. It is the adult support and interaction that allow children to feel safe, secure, and comfortable exploring their environment. In this program, Carolina and I are very familiar with the likes and dislikes of the children, as well as their different temperaments. To the music? We are aware that Nadia often plays independently, so we make sure and remember to play with her, even though Nadia may not cry or fuss. Nadia has spent time this morning in the cozy book area of the room, enjoying books, <coughs> soft toys, and interacting with other children. However, because she has been on this side of the room and is not crawling yet, she needs adult support to experience different types of toys. It is important for us to interact with her and move her to other areas of the room so she can explore the wide variety of materials provided. Some of the other infants seem to want and need more interaction with their caregivers. Today, Eden is showing signs of needing to be held, even though her physical needs have been met. Carolina soothes her and will engage her with learning materials when Eden becomes relaxed and interested. 
While providing lots of interesting materials, Carolina and I also want to make sure we do not overstimulate the children. What does a doggy say? Hi. Hi. Doggy says hi. Hi. Doggy says woof woof. The doggy says woof woof. Do you want one? Infant teachers may wonder how many toys are really needed for this age group, particularly for the non-mobile children. Infants do not need stacks of toys around them, of course, or forced play with materials when not interested. Instead, the skillful and knowledgeable teacher facilitates experimentation with materials based on each child's unique interests, abilities, and needs. Teachers can watch for cues from the children to make sure they are interested in play and are enjoying the activities in the classroom. Teachers create an environment that offers children familiar toys as well as new materials. Providing a well-stocked classroom with different learning materials and furnishings helps teachers to meet the needs of all the children in the group. Let's roll it back to Christopher. In offering a quality infant program, this child care center has spent much time thinking about balancing children's individual routine care needs like with social, okay. emotional, oh, okay. and cognitive needs. Okay. Can you place it in here? Let me find another one. We'll find a clean one. Let's go. Wash your hands and find a clean toy, okay? Okay? Let's go. Research shows that smaller teacher-to-child ratios and group sizes have a positive impact on children's experience in childcare. Mm -hmm. Carolina, did you already wash these toys? Yes, I did, Carrie. Okay, let me just sanitize them. It's been a long day. Sometimes just meeting the basic physical needs of infants can take a significant amount of the caregiver's time and attention. If there are too many children enrolled in the group, there may be little time for the teachers to address other areas of development. Ensuring even the youngest children have appropriate materials to use during the day is vital for quality programs. I'm going to call a floater. Carrie, I'm going to call someone to help, okay? As described earlier, this center has decided to provide a floater teacher who is available to help when needed. The floater allows the caregivers to meet the physical needs of the babies as well as provide learning opportunities. There are many ways that teachers can assist infants in using learning materials and furnishings, including very young, non-mobile babies. Regardless of setting, infants have the same needs to be loved, cared for, and respected. Their environment should allow exploration and provide developmentally appropriate learning materials. Because of the wide range of individual needs in a group of infants, offering a nurturing and stimulating classroom can be challenging. Child care program administrators and teachers are charged with the responsibility of ensuring all children, including the infants, have a quality child care experience. We thank you for view Yay! We thank you for viewing the DVD. We hope it is helpful as you plan for a unique characteristics of your infant program. For additional information about quality infant care, we encourage you to read the video supplement and list of resources found in the video guide.